Many of us here today are fortunate to live in this amazing natural wonderland of the San Juan Islands. And so today I want to talk to you a little bit about how we can have the best of both worlds, how we can enjoy our fortunate lifestyle and also take personal accountability for reversing climate change. And so as Adam mentioned a little bit, I wanted to give you a, a background of myself as an Islander. And early on I had spent, uh, used to come up camping with my mother and father up to Shaw Island to visit their friends. And they had a daughter my age, and so we would, um, we all learned to, to sail on a Chinese junk. And also uh, we would take bicycles, and while the adults were enjoying their day, we would get on our bicycles and, and get on the ferries with our bicycles and explore the islands. And there was a sense of joy and freedom in that that was uh, quite inspirational for me. And we'd return home, and of course there was fresh crab and baked bread. And, and what I learned was an incredible sense of friendship and connection and joy and the natural world here. And so my parents eventually purchased and built a home on Shaw uh, in the early 70s. And although they're not with us now, they, they are close by, they're in the Shaw Cemetery, and it's in, incredibly uh, grounding for me to be, still be near them and have reference to all of this, because they're, what I base myself on during those times and first being here in the islands is that was really a time that all the things that I, I do love about myself, I learned during that time the courage of exploration and the joy of friendship and, and memories and, and being together in this beautiful place. So what I did was I took that sense of exploration with me. And I, I went in uh, for Santa Barbara, UC Santa Barbara. I got an undergraduate degree in environmental studies. And then from there was extremely interested in, oddly enough, financial systems and economics. And so I, I went to work for a while at Merrill Lynch to learn about markets and how to create value and, and value at scale and how equities worked. And then from there, I learned also the magic of technology and the ability to, uh, the importance of incorporating sustainability in corporations. And so that's where I took the step and, and I was working at Merrill in, uh, in Seattle. So I stepped over and started to work at, at Microsoft at the time. And then I went back to school to get an advanced degree, uh, a master's degree, an MBA in sustainable business and environmental policy. And I've used that role as a foundation for my work leading our environmentally responsible operations in over 100 countries at Microsoft. And so that, that was really a sense of inspiration and exploration that, that I brought with me. And since then, as Adam mentioned, um, I have been able to return back to the islands, and that's been an amazing progression for me to bring both of these together. And, and if it wasn't for this technology and devices that I'll get into in a little bit, that wouldn't be possible. So the ability to collaborate is one of the benefits we'll, we'll talk about. And, and being back here um, has certainly a different experience. Now what I realize is how dependent I am on devices and technology. Um, many of us here that I know are um, as well, I'm a pilot and a boater, and so I, I realized, and especially in preparation for this presentation, how many devices I have, and God forbid I lose my power cord. But I have radios, I have marine radios, I have aviation radios, and when I plan a trip, I'm checking climate, I'm checking tides, I'm checking um, all different of the elements that I need to prepare for either a flight plan or a trip in the boat. And, or even for us that are on the ferry, we, you know, we use our computer or our phone to be able to make ferry reservations. And so what I've found is that dependency on the devices and as well that ability to, to be able to have the electricity to power these devices. And one of the things that happened uh, that explains not only the beauty of connection, but also devices. I was, again, it was Friday, I was preparing for this and I had a call come in on my landline that I've connected and forwarded to my cell phone which is always simultaneously ringing on my computer and they were all going off at once and and it was like I, I didn't have enough hands to deal with all the devices that I needed to access in that moment and and so it was an enlightening moment and and then realizing how many backup power cords I have to have because if I leave one behind and and so it's been a very um, uh, self-reflective uh, process as, as I've been preparing for this presentation. But the idea is that it's, again, referring back to the best of both worlds, is technology brings us so much. 
It allows us to be able to, to walk the streets virtually of Florence from our phone or, or dive the blue corner in Palau. It allows us to have emergency alert systems. It allows us to be able to accelerate research breakthroughs to make a big difference for us as people and the planet. And these are all important elements for us from a technology perspective that we enjoy in our modern society. And so it's the ability to progress with that and also understand that they are, all these devices and this technology are very dependent on the power sources. And yet, almost 20% of the population today does not have access to electricity, let alone the technology or the lovely things like float planes or ferries. And, and so the, in this essence, the opportunity for these folks to be able to have access to services, lighting, heating, cooling, education and healthcare is critically important. And it is also these emerging nations that are also increasing in population. We are, we are growing at a rate like faster than rabbits or deer on the island rabbits or deer here, which is very hard to even imagine. But we are progressively growing from 7.3 billion people now to more than 9 billion people within 2050. And so with the growth here also happening in these developing nations, what we see is there's going to be an incredible impact on our climate if we don't help the folks in the developing nations grow in a way that is in a low carbon economy. And there's a way I think that we can, we can explain this um, in a fairly straightforward way. And, and this is based on a formula from our friend Bill Gates Jr. And what he has done is he's laid out a formula here that I'll, I'll take you through. And it starts with the people, and that's the P, that we're also seeing is increasing over time substantially. And then we've got the services that are required per person, like the lighting, the heating, and the cooling, the education, the health care. And then there is the energy per unit of this service. And that can be efficiency. We can drive lean activity and, and reduce that, that energy per service. And then there's also the element of how much carbon per unit of energy for the service per person. And the one area I think we can all make a difference in is reducing that variable, that carbon per unit of energy, per unit of service per person. And I'm going to show you ways that each one of us can take this personally and make a difference here and get to net neutral on that carbon component. And the good news here, I think, is that there is um, a big area for improvement. Currently, almost 80% of the energy that we consume today is based on fossil fuels, and that's petroleum, coal, and natural gas. So there are opportunities for, for us to increase, the, make the pie bigger, but have the renewable energy be the source of that. And the good news here, too, is that we have visionaries in this area. Tesla was, has, has talked for a very long time about, obviously, the opportunity for solar and for renewable energy, and also that that renewable energy is a right that we should have that for free. And so there is good thinking behind this. And as a matter of fact, when we take a look at that solar energy and where those sources are available, they are right in the developing nations. So we have access. We have access to solutions that are right above us or right below our feet. And this is where, even in ocean currents, when we've got tides, we've got tidal energy, we've got um, uh, ocean currents that we can pull from. I mean, even, and I'm over um, looking out over Spring Passage, there are, when, when we see the tides even go by there, I see, I don't know if you guys have, have noticed this, but I look out there sometimes, and there's the logs that go by with the birds on them, and they're going by at a very clip pace. You know, I mean, there's like 10 knots of energy going by with these logs and these birds going by that look like they're on, on buses. And it's like, I think because of the speed, there's an urgency of, we've got to go to market and get our fish. And they just go by. And then, and then 12 or so hours later, I see them coming right back. Like, oh, and because of the speed and the power and the tides, they're like, okay, we got to get, we got our fish. We're getting home to the kids. And literally, they just go back and forth up and down Spring Passage. And, it's, and I thought, you know, there's, there's energy to be, to be tapped in these tidal areas. And so we actually are working on a project now to, to, to tap that type of tidal energy for some of the, the data center work at Microsoft, which is, is pretty exciting. And all of that to say that we are at a tipping point. Uh, recently, when I attended the conference um, in Paris, the United Nations conference, 196 nations together coming to a consensus. I don't know if that's ever geopolitically happened before, but let alone around the topic of climate change. 
and to transfer $100 billion a year to these emerging nations to help them develop in a low-carbon economy. So today what I'd like to do is to share a model in, of my work that, at Microsoft that I think that each of us can take either and use this in our own organization or personally in our own lives to be able to reverse climate change. And that, that's the opportunity to have the best of both worlds. How can we enjoy our lifestyles? How can we enjoy the benefits and the beauty of, of evolution and the benefits and the value that technology does bring to us as people and as a planet? And what you'll see with this model and what we've experienced is a huge culture change within this organization. And that's been a win-win-win. It's been a win for the business because it's, been dri it's driven accountability for each employee. It's also been a win for the customer who cares about the services and the products that they buy. And also, it's a win for the planet because it is a way that we are basically bringing up money to be able to support the green initiatives and have self-funding. And I'll tell you a little bit about how we get there. And it's really in a way that is about lean, green, and accountable. And that's the way we have um, established how to approach this model. These are our principles. And to be lean is to be efficient. How do we reduce that, that amount of energy per service? And, and the, the way that we can do that, even, even personally, is to take a look at the maintenance and repair. How do we accelerate fixes in our homes or in, in our organizations to replace blowers or air conditioners? How can we replace our lighting to increase that efficiency and not, not consume quite so much? How do we reduce the energy consumption of, let's say, the products that are made so that our customers can benefit from that? And so there are many different elements of being lean. And to be green, not only how can we um, increase the amount of renewable energy that's on the grid by building wind farms and solar farms, but also how can, how can each of us live a cleaner environment? How can we have interior air quality? that is beneficial for us? How do we get the toxins out of our carpets, out of our furniture? How do we live in a more clean fashion in that way? How do we get the toxins out of our products? How do, we, how do we clean up all the way around us so that it is a very healthy environment for us to live in? And then thirdly, and this is a very exciting part about this, is to how to be accountable. And part of this model and what's so special about the way we get to carbon neutrality and the work that I've done is to create basically a carbon tax. And in this way, this carbon tax is the largest carbon tax geographically in the world. And the way we've established it, and we'll get into some of the particulars, but the concept is to drive accountability. And it's, it's really a, a simple model, which actually drives the economists up in Capitol Hill crazy, because this, the simple way to do this is that Microsoft approaches we, the way I've set up the model is to first take an inventory of greenhouse gas emissions. What, what is our footprint? And this is something that's available for each of us to understand in our own lives. And then once I know that, that footprint, then what do I need to do to drive efficiencies and to be lean? What do we need to do to invest in for green? And then we take that total <coughs> investment, divide it by the footprint, and that gives you the price on carbon. And so that in a very simple way, and then taking that price on carbon, you think, if you think back to, to Bill's formula, if you take that price on carbon and multiply it by the energy per service per person, then you end up having the funds available in order to, to support your green initiatives. And so that's really been the approach that we've been taking. And the opportunity here is not only to, um, to be able to support the green in the in the renewable energy, but also there are, are specific carbon offset projects that are available as part of being green. And these are percentages of, of different types of technology, whether it is supporting planting trees and, and preserving forests, or it is bringing efficient cook stoves into, into homes so that we improve the interior air quality of villagers in emerging nations and free up the women from tending the fire so that they can go out and earn an income. There are many different ways that we can actually use this funding and this finance, transfer it out to the emerging nations for not only reducing carbon and helping them develop in a low carbon economy, but also have additional benefits that are associated with this effort. And there are many side impacts, and I'll, I'll give you an example of, of 
of some of the, the projects that we have. There's a project in Kenya, and we fund the planting of trees within uh, a group of villages in Kenya. And the villagers are consistently amazed that they can make money from planting trees because they're used to cutting them down for charcoal for fuel. And so now they're getting paid to, to keep the trees in the ground. And, and also we, we replace the charcoal with some of these efficient cook stoves that I mentioned. And so the women are now able to go out and generate an income and they've built a factory where they sew clothes that they sell to Puma. And then they take the money from the clothes in Puma and build schools for their children and the hospitals. And then the men that used to be working for the poachers are now rangers in the forest protecting the trees and the wildlife. So when you look at carbon finance and the ability to not only reduce the carbon in these emerging areas, but also to have these huge, beautiful impacts on people's lives, it's a very powerful way that we can make a difference. And each one of us can do that. So in closing, um, I'd like to, to offer you up a, a link where you can find some additional white papers on this work that helps explain all of the details and the particulars in some white papers that I've written and published uh, on, on this link. And as well then, for you to also take steps yourself, because personally, you can make a difference. The United Nations has a, a site called Carbon Neutral Now, where you can, um, it helps you figure out your own carbon footprint and then allows you as individuals to be able to come out and, and purchase these carbon offsets that actually helps transfer the money to the emerging nations and improve their lifestyles in the exact way that I've, that I've mentioned. So I'm hoping that we can all make a difference together. We, we have the capacity to reverse climate change and it is up to every one of us personally because we can no longer procrastinate. So thank you very much.